Have you been wondering whether your city is making you miserable and maybe you want to do something about it? Or you're looking to move and you're trying to figure out how to identify the best city to live in? I might be able to help you. Over the last few years, together with my colleague psychologist, we've been looking into research that helps identify how urban design impacts mental health. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you major insights from this overview. On March 20, 2020, the Sustainable Development Solutions Network published their yearly report. It's the World Happiness Report, and this time it was focusing on cities. In this report, they ranked over 200 cities from all over the world, trying to look into the overall well-being of its citizens. The winner, that should come as hardly any surprise to many, is Helsinki. In fact, six out of 10 top cities on the list are Nordic cities. Why? Let's look into the research of what makes us happy in the city. In fact, many have studied what makes us happy, full stop. While not that many have yet looked into the cross-section between urban design and mental health, yet the impact is huge. Living in cities increases the risk of mood disorders, anxiety, it doubles the risk of schizophrenia, and it actually increases the risk of cocaine and heroin addiction. At the same time, living in cities is associated with a decrease in the risk of Alzheimer's disease, and it cuts in half the risk of suicides. So what are the key ways in which urban design impacts mental health? Let's look at eight key factors that come into play. The first factor is access to green spaces. Contact with nature can positively impact our mental health. So, whether or not we have access to parks or river walks plays a key role in actual impact of our neighborhood on our mental health. Second one is access to active spaces, meaning do we have access to open or affordable spaces in which we can stay physically active, engaging in individual or group sports? As we all know, physical activity has huge impact on our mental health. So making sure that our city has plenty of such spaces will always be a good idea. The third factor is kind of obvious and yet it's not. Do we have benches? Do we have squares? Do we have places in which we can stop and mingle and talk with others and actually create connections and build interactions and make sure that we're in touch with one another? Or does our city encourage us to just walk fast past other people and do not stop? This clearly has strong impact on our mental health. The next one is safety. Do we feel safe in our neighborhood and in our city? And by safety, I don't only mean crime. I mean traffic safety or, for example, is our neighborhood polluted or not? These all are stress factors that impact our daily lives and accumulated, they have, can be hugely detrimental. The fifth factor is sleep. Oh my God, sleep. I don't know about you, but if I don't get proper sleep, I'm in no mood. Now, in cities, getting proper sleep can get really, really difficult. Noise pollution, light pollution, this all impacts the quality of our sleep and long-term, this can impact hugely our own mental health and our well-being. Number six is transportation and connectivity. Are we well connected? Do we have the opportunity to get wherever we want in a city, in an affordable and relatively quick way. Feeling disconnected or even cut off from other parts of city or society can actually be very detrimental to our well-being. The seventh factor is economic stress and affordability. And this particularly applies to the poorer side uh, of our society. Do they have access to affordable housing? Are the neighborhoods in which they live crime infested? Do they have opportunities to actually make a living and make it till the end of the month before they make it till the end of the money? These are all aspects that are generating 
a huge amount of stress and stress is closely linked to our mental health. So affordability in the city is hugely important when it comes to this particularly fragile group of our society. The last factor might be surprising to some of you. It's air pollution. And even though we know quite a lot about how air pollution impacts our lungs or our heart, we don't know much about how it impacts our heads. And in fact, research shows that air pollution is correlated with rising levels of depression. The particles that are in the polluted air are actually impacting the structure of our brain, making us more prone to actually fall into depression. So making sure that our air is clean is not only for the sake of our physical health, but also our mental health. So these are the eight key factors that impact our mental health through our brain design. Have any of them been surprising to you? If so, leave a comment below. I'm very curious to hear which of these. Now, we know that our environment impacts our mental health. We know it even subconsciously. And this is the basic premise be behind Happy Maps. Happy Maps is a project that uses crowdsourced geotagged photos to determine which parts of our city, which paths throughout our city, are making people the happiest. In this simple yet very telling project, we can take a look at efficiency versus happiness. And I strongly encourage you to take a look at the website and at the video uh, in which um, the founder of Happy Maps is describing the entire endeavor and is telling what are the logic and the reasons behind creating Happy Maps. I think it's a great watch. Now that you know a little bit more about the impact of urban design on mental health, I'm going to give you three sources that can help you dig even deeper. The first one is the Center of Urban Design and Mental Health, founded by Linda McKay. She is the author of many researches and publications that touch upon the cross-section of urban design and mental health. Actually, the list of eight key factors that impact our mental health in cities were from Linda's research. So the first recommendation that I make is for you to jump to Linda's website. I'm going to write that in the comments below and take a look at the research that she's published. Number two, if you're not really interested in reading, I have some really interesting videos for you to watch. You can start with Charles Montgomery, who is well known for his book Happy City, which describes the ways in which urban design can impact our well-being and can make sure that the citizens are happy and actually willing to stay in your city. Number three is your friends. Make a survey. Publish a simple question on your social media and ask, what are the parts of our city that make you the happiest? Or what are the parts of our city that make you the most miserable? Maybe ask them to send some photos, maybe ask them to send some stories that are attached to a specific part of the city. This can give you a very interesting insight in how different neighborhoods might feel and what constitutes their overall well-being. Once you've done that, there's plenty more research to go through. If you're interested in that, write it in the comments below. Meanwhile, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up if you liked this video, and I'll see you next week. Ciao, guys!